today we're going to continue on with counting. I have two scenarios here that sound very similar. The first one, how many ways are there to select a president, a vice president, and a secretary from the following list of people? The second scenario, how many ways are there to select a three-person team from the following list of people? And that's the same, same list of people. So the first scenario we've talked about already. In fact, it's similar to one of the questions that was on your lab. So let's, let's do the first one. How many ways are there to select a president, a vice president, and a secretary? So using the counter principle that we talked about in the last lecture, the first thing we need to do is decide how many blanks we need. So I'm choosing a president, a vice president, and a secretary. Three blanks. President, vice president, and a secretary. And then what we did was for each blank, we counted how many options we had for each blank. So for president, how many options do I have for picking a president? I have one, two, three, four, five people. So I have five options. Vice president, how many options do I have for vice president? Remember here, since we're picking people, it's assumed that no repetitions are allowed. So I'm not allowed to repeat people. So for vice president, I don't have the full five because I already picked one person for president, which means I should be down to four people. And then for the same reason, for secretary, I don't have the full five anymore. I chose two people already, so I'm down by two. We're down to three. And then what you do is you multiply these together. So five times four times three, which is 60. So there are 60 ways to choose a president, vice president, and secretary from this list of people. Now what's different about the second scenario? The second scenario says, how many ways are there to select a three person team? And the difference is no jobs are specified here, right? It's just three person team. So in the first scenario, notice that if I picked Allen, Brooke, Courtney, that's different than Courtney, Brooke, Allen. Because with Allen, Brooke, Courtney, Allen is president. If I choose Courtney, Brooke, Allen, Courtney's president. So that counts as two different possibilities. Whereas in the second scenario, if we're just picking a three person team, no special jobs, Alan Brooke Courtney is the same three people as Courtney Brooke Allen. Okay? So the first scenario here where we have special jobs, the order matters. Okay? And this is called a permutation. The order matters. And if we think about the examples that we did in the last lecture, right, this was one of them, where we're choosing people uh, for uh, specific jobs. The other examples we talked about were license plates, okay, order matters in the license plate. If you swap two letters, it's a different license plate. We talked about passwords. If you swap two characters, it's a different password. So everything we talked about in that first lecture, the order matters. They were all permutations. The second scenario here, where we're picking three people with no special jobs, the order does not matter. And this is called a combination. So how do you count combinations when the order does not matter? So I'm gonna first count this the long way by just listing out all the possibilities. And then I'll talk about a formula, and then I'll show you how to use a calculator to find the answer. Okay, so I'm gonna do this a long way by trying to list out all the three person teams that I can. Okay, let me try to be uh, organized here. So I can have Alan Brooke Courtney, which I'm gonna write as ABC. What else? I can have Alan Brooke Darren. What else? Alan Brooke Emily. Okay, I think that's all the teams that include Alan and Brooke. What about now Alan Courtney Darren? Alan Courtney Emily. Okay, I think that's all the ones that include Alan and Courtney. What else? 
I can have Alan, Darren, Emily. What else? I can have Brooke, Courtney, Darren. Brooke, Courtney, Darren. Brooke, Courtney, Emily. Brooke, Darren, Emily. What else? Courtney, Darren, Emily. What else? I think that might be it, okay? So notice that any other three-person team you can think of, say, Emily, Courtney, Brooke, I already have, because I already have Brooke, Courtney, Emily, right? So the order doesn't matter, which means I already have Emily, Courtney, Brooke already. Brooke, Courtney, Emily. So I think that's all. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, listing out is hard because you never know whether you're finished and you never know whether you listed something that's already that you already listed already. So I think it's 10. And now the question is, is there a better way to get to this 10 without having to list out uh, everything? And the answer is yes. So there's going to be a formula. Um, before I talk about the formula, let me talk about notation. For combinations, the notation for this is going to be For this one, it's going to be five choose three. Okay, so the five represents how many people you have total in your list. The three is how many people you're choosing. Okay, and the way you read this is five choose three. Five people total, and you're choosing three. And now let's talk about the formula. All right, there is a formula for counting combinations. So the plan here is I'm gonna show you the formula, I'm gonna show you how to use the formula, and then I'm gonna show you how to use a calculator to get the answer, okay? The formula and doing it by hand, you don't have to do. So if you wanna just chill for the formula and this first example, uh, you can chill. The formula for combination is gonna be N choose R, okay? So N total items and you're choosing R of them. The formula is okay. So that exclamation mark uh, stands for factorial. And I'll explain what that is in, in a little bit. So this, the formula is n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. So let's do the first example. So this one we're gonna do by hand. A restaurant offers a special with five toppings. If the restaurant has 12 toppings from which to choose, how many different special pizzas are possible? So I have 12 toppings and I'm choosing five toppings for my pizza. Notice that this is a situation where the order does not matter. Okay, so the order that you choose these five toppings doesn't matter because they're all gonna go, going to go on your pizza. The order doesn't matter, or does it? Does it matter if you put pepperoni first and then onions? or onions first and then pepperoni on a pizza? Probably not, right? So order does not matter here, which means this is indeed a combination. So all you do for a combination is something choose something, okay? How many items total? How many toppings total do we have to choose from? 12, so this is 12. Choose how many are we choosing? We're choosing five. Okay, so 12 choose five. Using my formula up top is going to be n factorial, which is the total factorial, 12 factorial. On the bottom is going to be r factorial, r is five, and then n minus r factorial, which is going to be 12 minus five factorial. Next step, I'm gonna do this parentheses first. So 12 minus five is, what's 12 minus five? Seven. Okay, so that's seven factorial right there. 
there's still a 5 factorial and there's still a 12 factorial. Now, what, what does this factorial mean? So factorial means, 12 factorial means 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 all the way down to 1. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, factorial just means you're going to start with the number and then multiply going downward. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 7 factorial means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? Now, from here, I have a whole bunch of numbers on top, I have a whole bunch of numbers on the bottom. A lot of these things cancel out. So first of all, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I see right here, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So all of that should cancel with the 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the bottom. So now on top, I just have 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now from here, you can just type that into the calculator. Um, 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 on top. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 on bottom. Or there's still more canceling we can do, right? So this is uh, reducing fractions from like pre-algebra. So I know that I can cancel 2 and 8 will cancel, leaving a 4. 3, 3 can cancel with the 9 and leaves a 3. 4, uh, 4 can cancel with the 12, leaving a 3. And the 5 can cancel with the 10, leaving a 2. Okay, so now what do we have? So I'll continue on up here. So now up top, I have 3, 11, 2, 3, 4. So 3 times 11 times 2 times 3 times 4. On the bottom, everything cancels out except for the 1. So this is really just 3 times 11 times 2 times 3 times 4 on top, and then the 1 on bottom. So 3 times 11 times 2 times 3 times 4. 792. So it's 792 over 1, which is really just 792. Okay, so that's how you use the formula. Okay, you're not going to be required to use the formula um, on your lab or on the test. So just know that the formula exists. It can be done by hand, but you don't have to. So now let me show you how to do this 12 choose 5 on a calculator, which is the way you're actually going to use it uh, on your lab. The calculator that I recommend you use is called the Desmos Scientific Calculator. So the, the easiest way to get there is just to Google Desmos Scientific. And it should be the first thing that pops up. And it looks like this. I also put a link uh, at the beginning of each question on the lab. Okay, so here we are on the calculator. So what I want to do is calculate, what are we calculating? I want to calculate 12 choose 5 without using the formula. So I want to do 12, 12 choose 5 on this calculator. So the way you do it is you're going to click on FUNC, stands for function. So when you click on function, you should have this menu. Look at where it says NCR, so that's N choose R. Click on and choose R, and then you're going to type in, what are we doing? 12 choose 5. So the way you type in 12 choose 5 is you're just going to do 12, comma, 5. So how, how many there are total, comma, how many you want to choose. And then you can either close parentheses if you want, or you don't have to. Hit enter, 792, which is exactly what we got doing it by hand. All right, let's try the next example. A standard deck of cards contains 52 cards. How many different five card hands can be dealt? So here's a typical deck of cards. There's 52 cards total. Most card games, for example, five cards, I'm thinking of here, poker, you get dealt five cards. So in most card games, does it matter the order that you get these cards? No, right? So you get dealt five cards and then you can reorder them yourself. So it doesn't matter in what order you get the cards. So for most card games, 
because the order doesn't matter, it's a combination. So this is a combination. And we're going to do this using calculator. So what choose what? Total number of items, which is 52. And then how many are you choosing? We're choosing five cards. Okay, 52 choose five. Let's go back to my calculator. Okay, we're in the uh, FUNC, the function mode. Click on NCR. Total, comma, how many you're choosing. So we, we have a total of 52, comma, we're choosing five. Two five nine eight nine six zero. So that's a piece of useful trivia for you. Um, in a typical poker game, uh, there are 2,598,960 possible poker hands that you can be dealt. All right, so now we're gonna mix together combinations, which is new in this lecture, together with the permutations that we talked about in the last lecture. Okay, so the first thing we need to decide on every single question is whether it's a permutation or a combination. Permutations, the order does matter. Combinations, the order does not matter. If it's a permutation, the way you deal with it is the same as we did in the last lecture, which is figure out how many blanks you need. And then for each blank, fill in the number of options you have for each blank. If it's a combination, it's going to be something, choose something. So a number there, choose a number there. And then you can use a calculator and get the answer. All right, example one. My closet has 20 shirts. How many ways can I choose seven shirts to pack for my summer vacation? Okay, 20 shirts, I'm choosing seven. Question is, does the order that I choose these seven matter? No, right? I'm just gonna take the seven shirts, stick it in suitcase. It doesn't matter which which shirt I chose first, which one is second, I just throw it all into the suitcase. So here the order does not matter, which means it's a combination. Which means the answer is gonna be something choose something. What choose what? The total number of items total that I have to choose from, which is 20, 20 shirts. And then how many am I choosing? I'm choosing seven. Okay, 20 choose seven. You are gonna do this part on a calculator. So go to your calculator. Go to FUNC, NCR, and then type in uh, total, comma, how many you're choosing. So 20, comma, seven. 77520. Seven, Example two, my closet has 15 pants. How many ways can I choose five pants to wear for each day of the week if it matters which pants I wear on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Okay, so similar question, right? 15 pants, I'm choosing five. But it does say here that I do care which pants I wear on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. In other words, I do care about the order in this case. Okay, so it, order does matter, which means that it's a permutation. Okay, for permutations, figure out how many blanks you need. I'm choosing pants for Monday, choosing some pants for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I have one, two, three, four, five blanks. Okay, so I need to choose pants for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For Monday, how many options do I have? I have 15 pants total. So I have 15 pants to choose from, 15 options. And anytime we're talking about permutations, you do have to pay attention to whether you are allowed to repeat or whether you're not allowed to repeat. 
So it says here that I don't want to wear the same pants more than once. In other words, no repetition. Okay, so I want no repetition. Okay, if it's no repetitions, then for Tuesday, I don't have the full 15 anymore. I chose pants already for Monday, which means I'm down to 14. For Wednesday, same reason, I'm down to 13 now. I'm down to 12, and then I'm down to 11. You don't have to multiply it out. You just enter it in as 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11. Example three, my closet has 15 ties. How many ways can I choose five ties to wear for each day of the week if it matters which tie I wear on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Same setup as example two, right? So I do care about what I wear on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I do care about the order here, which means it's gonna be permutation. How many blanks do I need? I'm choosing a tie for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's five, one, two, three, four, five. One for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. First blank, how many options do I have? I have 15 ties total, which means I have 15 options for uh, which tie I choose on Monday. 15 options. Anytime you're dealing with permutation, you do have to pay attention to whether you are allowed repeats or, or not. Wearing a tie more than once is okay. Okay, so here I'm saying that it's okay to repeat ties. So repetitions are allowed. Okay, if repetitions are allowed, then you don't have to reduce uh, the, the, the total which means Tuesday, I should have the full 15 again. Wednesday, full 15, full 15, full 15. Example four. In the California Lottery Fantasy Five game, a player selects five different numbers from one to 39. How many different lottery tickets are possible? Now, I don't know if you ever played lottery before or know what, what it looks like, but in a lottery game, you pick five numbers from one to 39, and then there's a drawing. If you match all five numbers, you win the, the big prize, okay? So you're choosing five numbers between one and 39. Now, does the order of choosing those five numbers matter? And the answer is no. For lotteries, it doesn't matter uh, the order that you choose the five numbers, as long as you just match them. So here, order does not matter, which means this is a combination. Okay, if it's a combination, it's going to be something, choose something. What, choose what? So we're choosing a number between 1 and 39. So how many numbers are between 1 and 39? If you count, I think there's 39. And then how many are we choosing? We're choosing five different numbers. 39, choose 5 on a calculator. Okay, go to FUNC function, NCR, 39 choose five, 39 comma five. 575, 757. Before we move on, let me go back to this example where we have 12 toppings total and we're choosing five toppings. And let me clarify one thing. 12 choose five, so what we're calculating here is there's 12 toppings total, how many ways are there to choose five different toppings, okay? Exactly five different toppings. So we're not allowing people to say, I want double pepperoni and double mushrooms. And I'm not allowing people to say, I want all pepperoni. So I want exactly five different toppings. So this is 12 items, and how many ways are there to choose f exactly five different toppings? If you do allow people to say double pepperoni, double mushrooms, or all pepperoni, that's a more complicated counting problem, which uh, we're not going to talk about in this class. Okay, back to example five. 
10 friends, including Lucy and Ricky, need to arrange themselves in a line for a photo. Lucy and Ricky need to be in the middle with four friends on either side. How many ways can they arrange themselves for the photo? Okay, we're arranging people in a photo in a line. Does the order matter? Yes, right? If I swap two people, that counts as a different, uh, a different arrangement of people. So here, arranging people in a line, the order does matter, which means this is a permutation. Right, if you swap two people, right, you get a different picture. It's permutation, which means you need to decide how many blanks you need. Uh, I want Lucy Ricky in the middle. And then I want four friends on either side. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those are their friends. All right, so fill in how many options you have for each blank. If you have restrictions like this, my recommendation is fill those in first. First blank here. I want it to be either Lucy or Ricky. How many options do I have? Two, right, because it can be either Lucy or Ricky. So two options there. Now, we're talking about people here, which means um, it's understood that this is no repetitions because I don't want the same person in both spots. I mean, same person cannot be in both, both spots. Which means for my next one, Lucy Ricky, I don't have the full two, right? I put Lucy and Ricky, Lucy or Ricky in the first slot, which means I should be down to just one person left, one. And now let's go through and fill in the other blanks. So this is their friend. How many friends do I have total? Uh, 10 friends, including Lucy and Ricky, which means uh, eight friends, right? We have four friends on either side. So I have eight options for this first blank. We're talking about people, no repetitions, which means for the next blank, I should be down to seven friends left. Six, five, and I should be down to four here. Three, two, one. Example six, license plates in a certain state follow the format four letters followed by the digits, three digits. In addition, the letters S, Q, D, O, I are not allowed. If repetitions are allowed, how many different license plates are possible? Okay, license plates, does the order matter? Yes, it does, uh, which means this is a permutation. The way you deal with permutations is figure out how many blanks you need and then count the options for each blank. How many blanks do I need? Four letters, four digits, three digits, sorry. So four letters, three digits. One, two, three, four. These are letters. And then three digits. Okay, first letter. How many options do I have? Uh, normally A through Z is 26, right? 26 letters, but I'm not allowed to use S, Q, D, O, I. So if I take the 26 letters total and then take away one, two, three, four, five, 26 take away these five letters, I have 21 left. So 21 options for the first letter. Now, question is, am I allowed to repeat or not? Repetitions are allowed, okay? Uh, these restrictions of not using S, Q, D, O, and I apply to all the letters. For the second letter, I should have the 421, right? Because I, I am allowed to repeat. So 421, 421, 421. Digit, so digit was zero through nine. How many options are there? Zero through nine is 10. Next digit, zero to nine. I am allowed to repeat, which means I should have the full 10 to choose from and the full 10 to choose from. Example seven, a professor gives his students 10 essay questions to prepare for the exam. Only three of the questions will appear on the exam. How many different exams are possible? Okay, professor gives you a study guide that has 10 questions. 
and he tells you that three of them will appear on the exam. The first question you, sh you should ask yourself is, does the order matter here? Does it matter the order that these questions appear on your test? Probably not, right? Because you can do the test in any order you want. So it doesn't matter the order that these three questions appear on the test. What matters is which three questions are on the test. This is going to be a combination. Okay, if it's a combination, it's going to be something, choose something. Uh, how many items total do you have to choose from? 10. How many are you choosing? Three. 10 choose three. On a calculator, go to FUNC function, click on NCR, and it's gonna be 10 comma three, which is 120. Example eight. A committee of five people is chosen from a group consisting of eight women and 10 men. How many different committees are possible? The first question we need to ask ourselves is, does the order matter when we're picking these five people? And the answer is no, the order does not matter because we're not giving these people special jobs like president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. These are just five people, no special jobs. So it doesn't matter the order that we're picking these five people, which means this is a combination. For combinations, it's going to be something, choose something. We're choosing five people from a total of how many? So the entire group is eight women and 10 men, which is 18 people total. 18 choose five. Okay, on a calculator, FUNC, NCR, 18 comma five, eight, five, six, eight. Okay, next question, how many different committees are possible consisting of all women? Okay, still choosing five people, so still order does not matter, so still combination. If I want the committee to be all women, I'm just going to choose from the women, right? So I'm just going to choose from this group of women, which will be eight, still choosing five. So if I want a committee of all women, I'm just going to choose the five from the total of women. So eight choose five. Okay, back to my calculator. If you want to see NCR, eight comma five, 56. All right, example nine. A club consists of 27 members, including Claire and Greg. The club needs to choose a president, a vice president, a secretary, treasurer, and historian. How many ways can this, can this be done so that either Clara Gregg is the secretary and the other is treasurer? So this is different than choosing a committee, right? Because we're now we're choosing people that do have special jobs, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and historian. So this is going to be a permutation. Okay, which means I need to figure out how many blanks I need. I'm choosing a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, historian. That's one, two, three, four, five. President, vice president, secretary, treasurer, historian. Okay, and then in addition, I have some restrictions because I want Clara Gregg, secretary, and the other treasurer. So treasurer is also going to be Clara Gregg. Okay. So go through, fill in the blanks that have the restrictions first. So these two, how many options do I have for secretary? I want it to be Clara Gregg, two options. What about treasurer? I want it to be Clara Gregg, uh, but remember, we're talking about people, so no repetitions. So if it's no repetitions, I should be down to just one person. Because I use one of them for secretary, which means I'm down to just one person left. Okay, other blanks. President, 
how many options do I have here? The club has 27 members total, which includes Claire and Greg. So Claire and Greg are in there, 27. Um, but I already used two people, right? So Claire and Greg are out, which means I only have 25 people left. Vice President, I should be down to now 24 people left. And then for Historian, I should be down to 23 people. Example 10, Michael wants to create a password consisting of four letters followed by three digits. He wants the password to start with C, D, Y, or Z and end with 403, 40 or three. The letter part can have repetitions, the digit part cannot have repetitions. How many different codes can be created? We're talking about passwords here. Passwords, the order does matter. This is gonna be another permutation. Okay, for permutations, figure out how many blanks you need. Four letters, three digits. So one, two, three, four. These are all letters. Three digits. And then in addition, I have some restrictions. I want the password to start with C, D, Y, or Z. And I want it to end with four, zero, or three. Okay, go through and fill in the blanks that have the restrictions first. Uh, first blank, I want it to be <clears throat> C, D, Y, or Z, okay, which means uh, I have four options, four options. The last blank, I want it to be four, zero, or three, which means I have three options. The other blanks, uh, I don't have restric restrictions on. Uh, so this one, L. <clears throat> uh, no restrictions, so that's A through Z. Right, A through Z is 26 total. But question is, am I allowed to repeat? Okay, uh, it says that the letter part can have repetitions. So the letter part I can repeat, which means I should have the full 26 there. Okay, letter, I can repeat. So I have the full 26, full 26. Digit. The digit part cannot have repetitions. So digits, this is zero through nine. Uh, normally that would be 10, but because I cannot have repetitions and I already used one digit already, I should be down to nine here. And then for the next digit, I should be down to eight. Last thing I wanna mention, what is this thing called? Most people call this a combination lock, but for this type of lock, does the order of the numbers matter? Yes, it does, right? So should it be called a combination lock? I think this should be called a permutation lock. Anyway, that's my, that's my little rant. All right, that's all for today. Have a great day. See you guys in the next one.